I remember my grandfather telling me, God rest his soul, before he passed away, that men have four different appetites that you have to tend to. Physically, you need to make sure that you know how to cook. And if you don't know how to cook, then find out how to cook. And if you can't, then at least have a meal on the stove or in the stove by the time he get there that's warm. He said a visual appetite. He said, keep yourself up. He said, if this man, if you're the only woman that this man is going to be with, at least keep yourself up. He said, because men need to still need to be stimulated visually. So that way they can crave you. He said, and yeah, he said, love will still be there. He said, and although your looks will fade, you the one woman that he wants to look at, give him something. And then there's a sexual. My grandfather told me, he said that, yes, visually you can stimulate a man. He said, but don't forget that men are sexual in nature. He said, and so they're going to want to do what they want to do to their woman. You're the only woman that he's sleeping with. You're the only woman that he desired. And then last one, he said, men do have an emotional appetite. He said, all men want to feel is appreciated, understood, heard. I have a question for all the men out there. Um, do y'all even want to be husbands anymore? The footage you're seeing is of me and my family being as carefree as we want to be. Me believing that I was the luckiest man in the world. And I was doing everything right, you know, as a father. Shortly after that, I would find out that my ex resented me immensely. She would end up putting me on child support while we were in a relationship, while we were still in the same house, okay? Which would ultimately put me in debt of over $50,000 to $100,000, okay? Obviously, the state would take my license, put me further into a hole, yada, yada, yada. But why did she throw me out? Why did she choose to go and ride the cock carousel? She was bored. We had been together since I was 18, and she decided to go and do what she wanted to do with a coworker. Oh, well. Here's the thing, though. She didn't give me warning. She didn't give me anything. She just started resenting me, started treating me like shit, and ultimately, she just threw me out. <laughs> hey, he says I'm not taking care of you guys. You see, you see this, right? I'm not saying so, anything. What are you talking about? Can you just say that? What are you talking about? You're you want to record I, me? I'm asking you not to I, record I, me, I, and but, it's against okay, the law. Okay, but I'm it's recording for my own for my own thing. I'm not yeah, using it for court, dummy. Okay, I will, Susie. Just threw me out of our house, okay? And I was destitute, homeless. I ended up out here in Vegas. And to this day, she won't tell me why, what I did wrong to end that relationship. She was just bored. And in that time, I haven't had a relationship with my kids. She's turned them against me. Even this past Easter, I tried to go and visit them. They wouldn't even open the fucking door, okay? Young men right now don't want to get married because older men like me tell them the horror stories of what could happen. I was in that relationship for almost 16 years. I didn't think that it would end the way that it did. Not with me just waking up one day and being thrown out of my fucking house. You get what I'm saying? Nobody believes that. Ending up in debt, like I said, almost $100,000 in debt that I'm still paying off this day. Struggling to keep my head above water because I invested everything into that family as I was supposed to. But now that I'm on my own, now that I'm, now that I'm trying to navigate life, it's very difficult because I spent all of my youth under that woman. And I was, it was my family. I didn't think anything of it. But we tell young men this because they need to focus on themselves. We see y'all videos. We hear what y'all talk about. And y'all are very open about y'all hypergamous nature. So when people like me get up here and tell people, no, don't, don't, don't tie that knot. Because you, as a man, will end up in a current in a similar situation young men are listening and i'm glad that they are i really am because if i had a time machine the one thing i would go back and do is to tell myself at 18 don't pick up that phone when that girl called you and you fell in love with that woman she will ruin your fucking life first of all you're definitely a single woman because yes. you got the single woman tell that damn smoke detector. Mm -hmm. How do you live with that? Um, the way that I've been living with just being a single woman is... No, like, no, 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 no. Specifically, the smoke detector that keeps chirping. How oh. do you live with that? Can you just elaborate more on, like, the what, what do you mean by the smoke it, detector? It, it, it keeps going beep. Like red you, flags? You're, you're, are that, you that smoke detector that's beeping in the background. There's a oh. smoke detector. Um, it beeps every 30 seconds and it goes beep. I don't, I don't hear anything beeping. Do, did you just hear it again? Because I don't hear anything. Wait for it. Told you guys that they don't hear it after a while. <laughs> <laughs> 
There it was. I'm really exhausted from being alone. From waking up to no calls, no texts, and no checkups. I'm tired of feeling like my conversation is a burden to someone else's life. I'm tired of driving around for hours and wishing someone was in the passenger seat laughing with me. I'm tired of wondering what it is about me that makes me the problem. I'm trying to figure out why I can't seem to get past my own insecurity of never being loved. I want to be able to understand why I've never been someone's first choice. And I want to be able to understand why I feel like I've never been someone's first choice. Fellas, please do me a favor and stop giving money to women who ain't giving you nothing in return. It's too many nice guys out here giving women all of this money. I'm coaching a man right now who has been giving a woman at his job all this money to help her take care of her children. And he's been doing it for months. And he has only asked her to go on one date. And do you think she went on that date with him? He said, I was raised on this saying, no deposit and no return on your investment. You must invest in women. Show her you will not just be there emotionally, but also financially as well as spiritually. And yes, this is a good thing to teach a man. But some of y'all are using what you were taught on how to handle women on the wrong women. Let these women show you first who they are before you start doing all of this extra stuff. Yeah, you can give her basic stuff. Yeah, you can be nice and cordial. That's common courtesy. But to go out your way to be giving this woman thousands of dollars? No. Yo, some of the shit that girls be saying be having me weak. A oh, quick little story time. So there are three girls that I hang out with that I consider my actual friends. Now there's some other girls that hang out with us sometimes too, but they're more of like acquaintances. So one of the acquaintances asked me and my friends if we wanted to go to Miami with her and some other people. So me and my friends, all of us are in serious relationships. So we all were like, nah, we can't, we can't go. We got to sit this one out. So she asked us why and we all gave her the same response again. We all was like, we not going unless our man can come with us. So it's a no from us. So she got upset. She was like, I can't stand when girls get into relationships and act like they can't have a life outside of their man. So we're just like, girl, we have lives. It's just... We also have a man. We don't want to go to Miami and throw our ass in a circle until three o'clock in the morning. Like we don't, we don't do that. Now y'all, y'all single, y'all have at it. Y'all can do what y'all want to do. You can do that and don't have to worry about answering to nobody. Go ahead. But us, we, we not about to disrespect our man like that. We just not going to do it. When we do outings, we do outings that are relationship appropriate. We'll go have a little brunch and mimosas. We will go to the nail salon. We can go to Target and buy a bunch of shit that we know we don't need. We can get cute and go sit down and have a nice meal and catch up. We can go to a little wine tasting. But I'm not going to Miami for a week, boo. I'm just not going to do it. If he not coming, I'm not going. Especially since my man works a lot. My time with him is already limited. You think I'm about to cut out even more time? to go to Miami for a week? Like, no, no. Now, if you ever wanna do a couples retreat, boo, call me. But them girls trips, no, no. I'm I'm sitting it out every single time. I'm sorry, I'm not going. She talking about something y'all just too attached to y'all men. Your point? What's your point? What's the point? Cause you motherfucking right. Every chance I get, I'm glued to his hip, okay? Glued, not moving, so. You just want to be mad, baby. You, you just going to be upset today.
Y'all are really blaming black women for not crying and falling out on the floor because that black podcaster in Atlanta passed away? That individual put out hatred and violence and in doing so encouraged others to put out hatred and violence, especially towards black women. I think y'all are way too used to black women just being there for you no matter how you treat us. And those days, baby, they're gone. Stop focusing on what they're not doing. The more you continue to focus on what they're not doing, the more you complain about or nag about what they could be doing better, they're going to receive it as criticism. The more they receive this criticism, the more you're going to notice they're going to become defensive. Whenever they become defensive, they're going to engage in whatever mechanisms they have to do to protect themselves. Okay? So, understand that there are multiple people, or two people, depending on what relationship you have, who are coming in with differences, different ways of communicating, different ways of understanding, different perspectives, different ways of perceiving things. And two people or multiple people can add to whatever stresses or can add to whatever problems or can contribute to any relationship issues, okay? Turn the flashlight on yourself. Ask yourself what you may be doing wrong or what you could be doing better. Think about it this way. Would you like someone to constantly be criticizing you? Would you like someone to constantly complain and nag about the things that you're not doing or the things that you could be doing better? Take the time to focus on what you can be doing better, okay? Because just like you, I'm sure they want to feel appreciated for the things that they are doing. The more that you become receptive of yourself and understand your flaws and your faults in the relationship, the more you'll be willing to understand theirs, okay? And also, the more you'll be willing to help and you'll be willing to be patient and be understanding as they begin to change. Now, if you're noticing that there are no changes, that's something different. But as of now, take the time to focus on the things that you could be doing better. They'll notice it as well. Healthy relationships, y'all. Y'all have a good day. <laughs>